Hey, you guys, just wanted to say welcome to Young Blood Podcast and thanks for tuning in. We've got an awesome episode for you tonight. Uh, this is episode 36 of the show, and I just wanted to uh, thank all of you for tuning in and just say, um, I, bear with me here. I, I do everything and all of it myself. I definitely switched to a new computer uh, again, and unfortunately, the episode had a setting that was wrong that I did fix, but. Uh, it does sound a little bit twangier than normal, but it will be fixed after the next episode, you guys. So bear with me. Thanks for tuning in, and this is episode 37. I can't. Yeah, well, yeah, my body. Maybe labor, yeah, yeah, it gives up on me halfway through because I'm fucking... When I was 18, I used to work 12, 15-hour days, you know, and... That that alone would just kill me. Yeah, dude. I mean, I work fucking eight hours a day, but I'm sitting in a chair the whole time, and I can hardly stand it. It's kind of like weird because it's just like you know, there's you, you get manual labor jobs like yourself where you're like, I can only work six hours because it's so hard on my body. Right. And for me, it's like the exact opposite. It's like, dude, I'm pulling my hair out working eight hours because I'm just sitting in this chair not doing anything. Right. You know. Right. Like I've started to do like stretches, like get out of my chair and just do some stretches in my room or. Like, at lunch, I'll go, walk, go on walks around my neighborhood and stuff like that. I was like, damn, right. bro, I definitely wouldn't do that if I was still in the office, you know? But well, think about it, though. This this tile job that I did, um, you notice in that video how I don't leave that shower one time? Yeah. Right? So that's kind of convenient. So I, like, I set myself up. I set everything that I need all in that one little fucking two-square-foot, three-square-foot area, you know? So I don't have to do any walking or anything. Actually, half the time, I'm sitting on a bucket or just standing in one place. So it's really not that strainies but there's some days where it's yeah. like a whole day of just you're ripping out a fucking bathtub out of some lady's yeah. house and i'm sure there's certain areas of like where you're putting the tile and stuff that you have to get in like awkward body positions to like make it work like, oh dude you don't even want to know i don't i you don't, don't that's why i'm not in manual know. labor brother <laughs> like under so that bench that i wrapped when i when i did the tile under it on the wall so i put the bench in first and so i had to get on my hands and knees and upside down and do 45 degree angle cuts at a herringbone uh, design that didn't look like too high up either. What was it like two feet, two feet off um, the ground? Yeah, like maybe even less, maybe even less. Um, and well, so it's so take a five gallon bucket, yeah, and sit on it, and that's how tall a bench is in any shower. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, it's not that high at all. Yeah. It's like having to get underneath there, yeah. do the cuts, put all that shit in there, yeah. like. So, and it's funny, like, let's say you're putting numbers into a computer all day, um, it's, it gets very similar, you know, because all fucking day, all I'm doing is math problems. I'm taking, I'm taking a measurement from here, I'm doing geometry all fucking day, especially with a special design like this, you're just staring at a wall, and I was making jokes the other day, I was like, fuck, dude, I see shapes in my sleep now. (laughs) (laughs) I can't, I can't, man, I can't at all. Um, and real quick, Kara, come here, let me see your tattoo. How does it feel? How far down did he go? Oh, it looks like it hurts like a son of a bitch. It looks good though. Thank you. Nice. Okay. Hi, hi. Michael, Kira, Kira, Michael. Nice to meet you. Too. Nice to meet you. Um, Kira, would you hand me a PBR real quick? All right, so let's get into it, man. Um, let's talk a little bit about FOMO. FOMO, yeah, fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. Uh, you you probably got to be one of the number one um, people that I've ran into downtown being a bartender and frequenter and uh, things like that. That's not a bad thing. That's also just because like you're very heavily integrated at BSU. Yeah. You know, like when I met you, you were the freshman coordinator at Boise State when we were like... So oh, like, when I was on rotation there? Yeah, yeah. yeah like you, you fucking, you've always been kind of a beacon for people. You know, like people do surround around you, your 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 brothers and the frats, your 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 people who look up to you at BSU, especially because you're the first pe- person they ever met. You know, and you're also the the person who has introduced them to a whole lot of other great people. You know, and that's one thing I've noticed about you is I've never found a single negative person to be around you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I live life like you know, hate's not something that I like have like I, I can't say i hate anything or i hate anybody you know you only have so much time or energy in a day so i'm not gonna like waste my time and energy on something negative like that you know right and i guess i just yeah i guess my friends are basically the same way you know i surround myself around people who are positive help me stay positive you know 
like life's all about your environment. You know, if I'm in, around people who are negative all the time, I'm going to get negative or I'm just not going to enjoy myself, you know? Right, right. So it's just nice. I mean, especially, I mean, it's it's different. I mean, growing up in Boise, going to high school here, you know, you know, a lot of people we went to high school with, you know, like not dogging on them, but like they hung out with the same people they did in high school when they were in college. Right. Um, or even if they didn't go to college, they still lived here. They hang out with the same people. And not that I didn't want to hang out with people in high school. Still, all of them are still homies. You know, I see them, I'll be like, hey, what's up? You know, like I'll go get lunch with them, whatever. But like going into college, I was like, I want the full college experience. You know, I'm going to get myself involved with as much things I possibly can. I'm going to meet a bunch of new people, do a bunch of different things. I mean, you know, like I said, I was an orientation leader, was in a fraternity. Uh, I went on a service learning trip to Jamaica with Boise State. I was part of Dance Marathon. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it was fun. Met a lot of people. Networking is great. So, right. no matter where I go, I can... Remind me, so what did you go for? Oh, my degrees? Yeah. Yeah, so I have a double major in health science and Spanish. So. Oh, como estas? Muy bien, you step. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I have lost a little bit of my Spanish. You know, being in Idaho, you don't really use a lot of Spanish. No, you don't. So... It's I mean, like sign language for me. I was fluent in sign language before I moved here, and believe it or not, they didn't uh, they didn't credit any of my uh, sign language credits from California when I moved here. They were just I like, can believe uh, that. Yeah, they're like, yeah, you know, we don't really fucking think that's a class. You're burned. And I was like, oh, great. Well, how about some elective credits? We're like, we're not even going to give you anything. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to go fuck myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, capital. <laughs> yeah, you got to love it, dude. And then, like, so... My, my story when I moved here was kind of interesting because um, I was pretty much like heart set or I no, not pretty much. I was heart set on going to Mountain View um, because, okay. yeah, when we moved here, my, I hadn't I didn't know anybody. But my parents, they they know some they, they knew some people. Um, and so my dad had a best friend he went to BSU with and all that stuff. So they, they've got uh, they've got plenty of connections, but I didn't. You know, but they did have a daughter who was around the same age as me okay. who went to Mountain View. So I was like, sick. I at least have somebody who I can yeah, that could, beacon around, yeah. you know, be a friend with and introduce me, you know. And so I went on a tour to fucking uh, Mountain View and got my hopes all up. I was like, this school is so cool. It's brand new. It's all freaking, yeah. it's all, dude, I can do this. And I'm you got about stuck it. with... And then the next day, and I mean the day before my first day of school, and I was already, like, super shook about moving from L.A., just, like, we weren't even in a new house yet. But, like, we were staying with a family friend until yeah. my parents found an apartment. So, this is, like, everything was just, my whole world was turned upside yeah. down, you know? And so the next day, they're like, dude, so we found an apartment, and it's right next to Capitol High School in Boise, and I like went and looked up the like st- like the pictures of Capital and like all the information of Capital. I was like, dude, what the fuck is this concentration camp you're sending me to? <laughs> Literally like, looks like a fucking prison. A man, like, did, this, was this a prison at one time? Did they like just remodel a prison and turn it into a school or something? And then, uh, so my first day of school too, you know, like, you're that was uh, sophomore year, right? Yeah, yeah. The last two weeks of sophomore year is when I moved to fucking Capital. Yeah. Finals week, like the week before finals, everybody was studying for finals. Every single one of my teachers just took my grade from my class that I was at before and yeah. just transferred it over and said, "You don't even just fucking don't even show up for finals week, dude." And I was like, "Sick, I got really good at Call of Duty, but yeah, that much. <laughs> I got really fucking good." But yeah, my first my first like week or two at Capital was just such a culture shock. Like, yeah, there wasn't very many kids at that time. This was ten years ago. There was not a lot of kids who moved from California, so the few select you did got a lot of heat because they thought they were the shit, you yeah. know. And everybody was like, "Oh, we're gonna show you real quick, buddy. We don't like you." <laughs> yeah, dude, I figured that out when I moved because I moved to Boise from Orange County. When was it? Like my sixth grade year, so I was like ten or eleven, and right. it was kind of the same thing. Like I just told people, "They're like, oh, where are you from?" Like you know, just. But kids are meaner in high school. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. There's some kids that are mean in in junior high too, or in elementary school too. Like they're just like, it's kind of the same thing. It was just like, oh, you're from California. You must yeah. think you're the shit. And you know me, dude. I've been the same. Because they do. Everybody thinks they are. It's 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 honestly. I mean, like, I never thought I did. I was just like, okay, it's just I another. I thought I was the hottest yeah. shit on the fucking face of the earth. Yeah. You couldn't tear me down no matter what you did, and I got torn down. So. Like, but my thing was, a lot of it was basically, like, my, I was from fucking North Hollywood Burbank. Yeah. Fucking, everybody is on their own little fucking world. There's two high schools in the entire city of Burbank, where, and it's also their own 
Like, it's not a part of L.A. County. It's such a bougie fucking... Yeah, it's like its own. Yeah, it's such a bougie area that it's literally got its own school district, its own police departments. Burbank police are fucking douchebags. It's just... It's this whole different little fucking realm, you know? And so these kids were telling me dead ass. They're like, bro, fuck it. You're gonna be the coolest fucking kid. They're gonna think you're a hot fucking shit, dude. You're gonna love it up there, Mr. Big City. Yeah. And I was like, dude, filled with all these ideas. Yeah, you're just you like, know? I'm, I'm, I'm that dude. Yeah. I'm that dude. It doesn't help that I wore the, like, I wore the attire. Everybody goes, no, yeah. yeah. I stuck I mean, out like a sore thumb. Definitely, you know? yeah. Definitely, you know, you des- dress differently when you're in California than you do here, you know? And it's just like, yeah, I know. It's so weird. I found a difference for myself. It was like, because, you know, I'm from Orange County, Garden Grove, but that's one of the more shittier areas of Garden, or of Orange County, you know? And so, especially at Boise State, you know, a lot of Orange County kids come here, and a lot of them are like, oh, you're from Orange County? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm from Orange County. Like, I'm from Orange County, too. And they're like, oh, where are you from? And I was like, oh, Garden Grove. And they're like, oh, okay. Like, right. I'm like it's still Orange County, but it's just it's a lot more ghetto. <laughs> well, like, what helped me was after I graduated, um... I still, like, had a major sense of, like, something was missing, you know, a big void yeah. that needed to be filled because I was, I felt like, uh, what could have happened if I never moved, blah, 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 I'm 18 years old, like, I don't know who the fuck I am or where I'm from, you know, I love Idaho, but I think I need to go back to L.A., you know, and so my grandma died, um, and my, the last, like, Italian part of my family, like, big Italian funeral and everything, um, she, she passed away. So there was an Idaho funeral and I went to that. And then my sister flew me down for the LA funeral to kind of represent my, my parents and I, yeah. you know, and uh, I never came back. Oh shit. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, just, you just dropped out the face. Of the everybody, planet. Was like, everybody was like, dude, do you owe somebody money? Or, like, dude, there was rumors that I like fucking got into some trouble and like, I just dipped out and I was like, I came back to that and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I just left. Like, See, I feel like I knew you better in high school than most a lot of people in high school did. So I was like, eh, he probably just wanted to stay in California and just didn't come back. Like, It was an interesting situation that I fell into also because, like, my older sister was, like, in a pretty cool spot. She, like, kind of lined me up to get a cool, like, place. And, like, she had a lot of connections down there. And just, like, it, everything fell into place really quick. And, like, I eventually found myself living in fucking Bellflower, which is right next to Compton. You know, and I got the full LA experience, man. Like yeah. I was, I was going to underground raves at fucking East in the middle of East LA and fucking like in family friends' cars and shit. I didn't have my own car, so I just borrowed people's cars. And like mm-hmm. one time, I like went to this rave in the middle of fucking like East LA, like fucking phew, scary area, dude. And this this is an underground rave, you know. So they're they're not checking IDs or anything; yeah. they're just making sure you're not a fucking cop. You know, they're letting you in the door. And, you know, there's all kinds of crazy fucking drugs going around this thing. I'm just like, I, and my, I'm 18 years old. My mind is just blown. And at this point, I'm just there to glove. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I like, can't even remember like, me in high school. I was the only yeah. kid who ever owned a pair of light gloves in high school. And fucking. It's just so crazy because, like, I, w- I wouldn't even know. Like, you know, I've been multiple festivals, like, double digit festivals and all that stuff, but I couldn't even imagine what an underground LA rave would be oh, like. It's like, so weird, dude. It's the <laughs> weirdest fucking shit you've ever seen, man. And I remember I fucking. Don't know if I did a bunch of stupid drugs or not or anything, but I I woke up in the van, you know, that I borrowed yeah. from a family friend, and I was still parked on the side of the road right outside of the fucking underground rave, and I peeked through the blinds of the van. There's a bed in the back, and she, this is like a festival of fucking burning, yeah. burning Man van, you know? And so I'm, like, checking around, and I'm, like, I'm in the fucking shit, dude. I'm, like, holy fuck. I didn't even want to start my car and leave my I didn't even know how my car was still there. Yeah. Not <laughs> stolen. <laughs> You know, like, people probably thought the FBI was inside of this thing, so they left it alone because it was a fucking big white big van. Man, yeah. You know, so they're like, whoa, shit, we're not going to fuck with that. There's, there's the, uh-oh. You know, so I fucking, like, roll out of this fucking neighborhood in the middle of L.A., and I'm like, I have no idea where I'm at, bro. I'm, like, searching for a freeway. My phone's yeah. dead. This is back before when phone charges were easy yeah. to find and shit. I'm just like, oh, dude, why do I do this shit? <laughs> that's wild, bro. I can't even imagine. Oh, dude, that's... That's just what I did when I lived down there, man. I would, and like I didn't have a car too, and so my thing was is I knew the subway system opened back up at four a.m. So the second I would just go party up until four a.m. The second the subways opened back up, I'd hop on the East LA train and go back to my house up in fucking Compton, dude. And fucking, dude, crazy shit. Yeah. And I remember one time um, I got off on the, the wrong bus, uh, and Oof. I think it was like again like west side east side la yeah. like fucking the place you did not want to be 
Um, and I just remember that I had all of my camera gear on me. Oh, oh I had so I had like a couple thousand dollars in camera gear in my backpack because I was I was a street photographer at the time, so I just go around and take yeah. pictures and shit. And I was like, oh no. I'm going to get fucking robbed so bad right now, dude. And I, I remember seeing a Starbucks. My phone was dead. And I was like, oh, thank fucking God, a Starbucks, dude. I can go charge my phone or something, you know. And uh, I was, like, walking in the Starbucks. And as I walk in, I see two cops. And I was like, oh, thank fucking Jesus, dude. I walk up to these two cops. And I'm like, guys, I fucked up. I have no idea where I'm at. I'm not from the area. Fucking got off on the wrong bus. Dude, and they hopped me in the back of their car and took me to the right bus stop. And they're like, bus will be here in like 10 minutes. You better get on that shit. (laughs) Get the fuck out of here, bro. (laughs) Damn. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And an even crazier story. uh, A lot of this shit happened on the train. Um, I remember one time sitting on the train. um, And the train that I took to get back to my crib always went through east side. Uh, mm-hmm. came out of downtown LA, went to, up through East Side, and it was fucking always interesting. Oh, I'm sure. So interesting to watch all this shit go down, dude. And like, I wouldn't even pull my cell phone out or use headphones on this fucking bus or tr- or on this train because I didn't want people to know I had a phone. Yeah. Dead ass. Because yeah. this is 2013. People see you with an iPhone, they're, they're gonna jack your ass in LA. Like, it's just you just don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to make yourself like seen or anything, right? And. This guy, we're, we're, we're up on the, uh, the, this is where the train comes out of the ground and you're going through the streets and all the, the train stops are actually like mm-hmm. on, the, on the side of the roads and shit. And this fucking full Chino homie gets on, dude. And like, and I, and I, and I mean like full on textbook flannel white t-shirt, only the top buttons buttoned. He's got dickies, fucking white socks all the way up to his knees. Like full, like the, you're, you're expected Chino, dude. He's got all white vans on and shit, and, like, obviously, I'm not going to look at this guy. Like, I just keep my head down, do my fucking thing. Like, I'm on my bus ride home. Don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with you. Whatever. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, Minding your own business. Yeah, and I'm looking down, and in my peripherals, I just see this fool's fist just completely swollen and bloody as fuck, you know? And I'm like, oh, great. You know? And I look... I keep looking down, and because I'm looking down, I just see his fucking vans are freshly smothered in blood, bro. Brand new white fucking vans, dude, just smothered in blood. Like, he just stomped some motherfucker, dude. And I was just like... And he obviously just got on the train to, like, whoop! Yeah. Just like, get out. Get, get out. And then just, okay. Shit, shit, shit. Peace. You know? And he was just sitting there talking to the dude, like, in front of him. What's up, dude? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, fuck, dude. Wrong place, wrong time. I did not belong here, dude. And, um... That's why, after that day, and I always made sure... Because I would always have my bike when I would take the trains. So that way, when I would get to the train stations, I wouldn't have to walk. Yeah. You didn't want to have to walk anywhere. Exactly. You know, you want to at least be mobile, especially because I lived in Bellflower, which is, like, right next to Compton. Yeah. Crazy shit, bro. And, you know, I thought about it because, like, you know, after after high school, I thought about moving back to California. You know, like, I want to go to USC, <clears throat> which, you know, a nice school, but definitely not a nice area where it's at, you know. Um then I decided, you know, I was just like, you know what? Like, I wanted to go to med school at the time. Didn't want to after I got into college, you know. So, thank God I didn't go to med school. But I saved myself so much money. And I was just like, bro, I love Boise. You know, it's super chill, super peaceful. You don't hear stories like that in Boise. Mm-hmm. I mean, Boise is getting bigger. Well, you don't hear stories like that in yeah, Boise. Yeah, you don't hear stories like that in Boise. So. Don't. I want it out. That's, and it was, it was funny to me because, like, I was there for a year. And this is right before EDC 2014, I believe which I had tickets to, and my whole, like, I had, like, this whole rave family that I met down in L.A. Like, everybody yeah. down there's a huge rave scene down there, you know, and so I had a whole fucking, like, crew of, like, 30 people who would call themselves, like, a rave family, you know, and, like, everybody there all, like, took care of each other and always hung out, and so, like, I think one of the people from my rave family was only going to EDC for the first night, and he already bought his ticket, and he wasn't going to sell it, so mm-hmm. he gave me the other two nights, so the deal oh, was... I could stay in the house and do the whole part. And we got an Airbnb back before Airbnbs were a thing. Yeah, it was, like, fresh. Yeah, and so we got a fucking huge Airbnb in Vegas with a pool and a hot tub. Like, the craziest fucking setup. So, like, the only the deal was on the first night at EDC, I had to stay at home by myself. And then he went he went back home, did what he had to do, like a wedding or some shit. Yeah. And then I got the other two nights. So it was, And I only yeah. paid for the other two nights. So I yeah, bought it, it worked off. out. So much fun, dude. So much fun. Yeah, dude, the first day, first time I went to EDC was 2015. And I bought my tickets, you know, back in December. Like, 
as soon as they went out, got tickets, you know. And then that's the summer I was an orientation leader at Boise State. Mm -hmm. And it just turns out I had a um, two-day orientation. So we had one day for, like, transfer students, and we had two days for, like, normal incoming freshmen, like, straight out of high school. And I had one Monday morning, so I had to be there at six at Boise State, 6.45 Monday morning. And I'm like, how can I get out of this? You know, couldn't get out of it. You know, it was a job. You know, I was getting paid right. for it. And I had a set schedule, but I was just like, damn. So I thought about selling my tickets, almost sold it to a couple of my, or the buddies I was going to go with for our other buddy. But then our other buddy I ended up getting a job and not going. So I was like, you know what? I'll just go to two days and I'll come back. Right. So I went the first two days. You know, third day comes. They All the homies, they took me to the airport. Um, then they went, and I was just like, my flight got delayed actually like four hours. Bro. No. <laughs> so, and it was this close to getting canceled, bro. It's the only time I've flown Allegiant. I will never fly Allegiant again. But, um, yeah, dude, it was like getting to like 1130, I think is what it was. And it's just like, they were this close to canceling it, but they didn't. So I actually flew home, got home at like 130 in the morning, landed in Boise, had a pack for my two-day uh, work the next day at Boise State. And... So I went to bed at like 2.30, had to wake up at 6. Oh, dark. And, it, and then I literally was up all day. I mean, I And this was your first EDC, right? Yeah, my first EDC ever. So, um, This was 2014? 15. Oh, I was going to say, did we go to the same EDC? Nah, dude. 2015. Seeing Avicii. That was fucking dope. I remember uh, I saw Dylan Francis. I saw... Um, Bro, dude, Bro Safari. When I saw Bro Safari Ooh. at UDC, that was the best gloving set that I've ever thrown in my entire life to this day. I fucking had, like, I remember it to a T. Like, I literally had a crowd of, like, 35 or 40 people because, like, that's this so was when rough. I was in, like, my prime yeah. of gloving, too, but That's just dude. so rough because there's so many people and you have to do so much extra movement. Not you for have... me. Well, yeah. <laughs> not that many people. I mean, you got to think of, you're, you're over here. I was doing, a double, I was doing a double show. Okay, and this is back sense. before yeah. double shows were, like, super huge, you know, so it was me and my buddy Francis, and we were just throwing this. And he was a, he was a dancer, so he was a super technical player yep. and shit. And to this day, I wish I could find videos from that night, dude. It was absolutely fucking nuts, the shit that me and my friend did. And we were just like, we both looked at each other after, like, I don't ever want to glove again. Like, that was my peak. Yeah. And you you're know? just like, oh, the coolest moment in my entire gloving career, like, 100%. I would say probably the coolest gloving. Cause, you know, I wouldn't consider myself a glover, but I glove, you know, because right. I just don't put enough time into it, you know. It's just kind of like something I'll do every now and again, you know. But it was... My second snow globe, so snow globe 2017, I think is what it was. Right. And me and Kevin were just standing there, you know, with our gloves on. And we have these guys with this huge camera like, come up and they're like, oh, like you guys should like battle or something. And I was just <laughs> like, what? Like, what? They're like, just do stuff, do stuff. And me and Kevin are sitting there like, what? okay. And then they were like, oh, no, no, that's not it. And I was just like, like, all right. I was just like, do you just want us to throw a double for you? And they were like, yeah, yeah, sure. We don't have terminology, but sure. So I was like, I had me and Kevin through a double. And Kevin threw, Kevin was on, like, one of the best shows he had done at that point. Right, right. You know? And then I felt really good about the double. And I was just like, damn. And I asked him, I was just like, dude, where can I get this footage? Like, how can I see this? And they're like, oh, in the official after movie. Oh, duh. But. They never put it never in Never put it in there. Fuckers. Yeah. Fuckers. And I was just like, dude, that was such, like, I'm sure if I look back at it, if me and Kevin look back at it now, we could definitely, obviously, you can see. Right. How, where you could have improved and done stuff. But in that moment, dude, it just felt so dope. Right. And I was so hyped after. So I definitely know what you're feeling about that because I was just like, that's probably the peak of my, like, gloving. Well, EDC was kind of a trip, too, because that was, like, one of the first years that they banned gloves. So... Yeah, dude, they're so intense. Because I remember I went 2017 and there was a dude giving this person next to me a show. And obviously, I didn't bring my gloves because I was just like, that was before I gloved. Right. Um, and all of a sudden, like, Security came up, pulled him, and was just like, "Yo, you can't do that." Like, see you again. We'll take your. I've gloves. gotten in a fight multiple times with security guards who tried to take my gloves. I was like, "I will leave this festival right fucking now before you take these fucking gloves off my hands, bro. I will throw <laughs> my hands at you before these come off. Fuck you." Yeah. Because they were like, at that time, they were like two, three hundred dollar fucking gloves, and that yeah. was, and dude, and like, especially because a lot of the times I have a rare glove set with like, fuck it, you know, is it the ones you lost just recently? Fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, I am notorious, dude. I am the one glove king, man. Everybody always has known me as the fucking guy who loses one of his gloves because, like, I, 
I just fucking have fun, man. I always party, but I always have my gloves on me. And it, Dude, they're so easy to lose if you don't like yeah, put them somewhere secure. Yeah, I always put them in my waistband because that's like the glover thing, dude. You put them in your waistband, they're yeah. right there, you know, and fucking one of them always falls out. Always. See, to bro, the tea, I always wear fanny packs when I go to festivals, shows, just because it makes it so much easier. I have a zipper on anything, like everything I put in there. Like, well, I do now. Yeah. <laughs> but like, bro, actually, that my fanny pack saved me from getting my phone stolen my first EDC. Like... Straight up, like, I was sitting there, and I felt somebody, like, reaching into my pocket, you know? And we're at, it was main stage, it was during Above and Beyond, um, on Connect Field, it was dope, but then all of a sudden, I just, like, grabbed, and I grabbed this dude's hand, and then it was me and, like, four of my homies, and so they were like, what's going on? I was just like, yo, this dude just had his hand in my pockets, and the dude just turned and ran. Skirt. And they were like, do we need Chase? And I was like, nah, bro, all my stuff was in my fanny pack. <laughs> And I was just like, bro, ever since that happened, I was just like, I'm wearing a fanny pack every single time. It yeah. just makes it so much easier. I actually did end up losing my phone and finding it. Dude, I did that at Base Canyon. Um, I didn't find my phone. So basically, uh, do you know Matt Schroeder? Matt Schroeder. I he, think so. He bartends at Brickyard. Um, very good friend of mine. Fucking me and him. That's who I went to Base Canyon with, just me and him. And um, fucking... Literally, we're so hammered, like, day two or something like that in the morning. And we're supposed to go into the festival, like, the next hour after this. And at this point, what we do when we go to festivals is we uh, stockpile food and we sell burritos from the camp. Mm. Yeah, we bring enough cooking equipment and enough food to feed an army. And we just barter and sell burritos the whole time. That pays for half the trip. It's kind of smart. Uh, yeah, we wake up about two hours early. We start cooking just breakfast burritos. Dude, we slammed out about 50 to 60 breakfast burritos at Base Canyon and sold them for $5 a pop. Um, yeah. Because it's like, yeah, I mean, it's 5 bucks. You're making money. They're not spending 10 bucks on yeah, something over the vendors. Exactly. But... And so what ended up happening is all of our neighbors, like, we would just hook them up with free burritos, and they would hook us up with all their extra fucking alcohol and extra shit. You know, so, like, it's fucking not even, like, noon on the second day, and our neighbors running around with a fucking bag of wine doing slap bags on everybody. Slap the bag! Slap the bag, motherfucker! Oh, and, I miss camping. Yeah, so Matt and I are literally, like, taking day naps before we're even supposed to go into the festival and shit, and I, I was more ready to go in than Matt. Matt was fucked up. <laughs> and uh, nice one. Thanks, man. And so, fucking, I go to the porta potty with my neighbors, and I leave my phone in the porta potty and don't think about it for a second. And I'm like, oh, fuck, dude, I forgot my phone. I think I left, like, left it at the camp. And it wasn't at the camp, but I ran back. And I was like, fuck, it was left it in the porta potty. And I called it off my buddy's phone. And some fucking homie answers it. And he's like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 if you want your phone, call this number. And, like, says that so quickly and hangs up. And Matt was calling the phone and he was hammered. So he was just like, all right, dude, he just fucking said, call this number, and I didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah. And fuck. And I was like, what do you mean? What the fuck? You know? And so I lose my phone second day of the trip, and at this point, like, nothing's bringing me down. I'm like, fuck it, dude. Yeah, that, yeah. so you can't let it get down. Yeah, I mean, I you like, paid so much dude. money to be there, you're at a festival, like, yeah. I'll deal with it after. I'll know? deal with it after, you know, I'll figure it out. And then I lose my wallet inside. And all of my friends. So I was wandering aimlessly around Base Canyon with no wallet, no phone, and in another state. So I was like, I am so fucking McFucked right now, dude. But at least it was a camping festival. Did you just go back to the campsite? No, it was the last day when I did it. Actually, no, it was, yeah, day three. It was the day three, so it was the last day. So I wasn't just trying to go back to camp because you couldn't get back in or something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. you know? And so I was like, fuck, man, this is literally the last day. I can't just call it. Otherwise, I'm, like, literally ruining the fucking night. No, but I meant, like, after. I mean, I would just... If that happened to me, I would have just wandered, done my own thing the whole time. And then when the festival ended... I did. I, I did. Yeah. And But I was so bummed. Like, there was a solid yeah, yeah. 30, 45 minutes where I was so... Because what I did was I said, fuck everything. I'm just going to go eat. I'm going to go to the food section. I'm going to go eat. I got money. I don't have my phone. I don't have my friends right now. And then you look... And then, I, like, because I lost my friends, I went to go eat. Yeah. While I was eating, I lost my wallet. Ooh. And I was like, no! <laughs> so I aimlessly walk around for, like, another hour after this. You know, I'm just, like, super shook, super bummed. But I'm, like, trying to make the best of it. You know, I'm like, yeah. the, of the most that I can do, you know. I'm like, fuck, dude, you gotta, ah, you know, fuck it. Like, I've been in worse situations. I'm at a festival, you know? And so I finally find my friends, and it kind of sucked because, like, the whole time I'm finally with my group, I'm like, ah contemplating life because my phone yeah, and my wallet are gone, yeah. you know? And so I, I find like an hour later, I go to the lost and found and somebody turned in my wallet. 
There you go. Yeah, so somebody turned in my wallet, took all of my money, but they turned yeah. my wallet in. And I was like, oh, fuck, dude, could be fucking worse. At least I got my ID and my cards. That's all I fucking need. Because I was super shook about my ID because I couldn't go to the store and get a new phone Yeah, without, without my, ID. my ID because I had an account. You See, know? bro, when I go to festivals, I don't even bring in my wallet, bro. I will put my ID and a debit card and some cash in my fanny pack. And the fanny pack I have like has like an inside zipper, so it's like right. on the backside, so it's against my body. So it's like if you can reach in there and grab stuff without me noticing, then you deserve it. You earned right. it, you know. Um, but yeah, dude, when I lost my phone at EDC, that one was wild because it was like I was leaving the next day. I had my ticket on my phone, you know, and I'd just been with these two girls that I had met um, day one. This is day two, um, and we're on main stage. And then you know, left me and my cousin are walking back somewhere else, you know. A minute later, like literally 60 seconds, I'm like, oh, God, I don't have my phone. So we go back trying to find them in the main stage, you know, and finally see a totem that was right next to me. I was like, oh, shit, okay. And then I find the girl, the the girl that I was with, and um, I was just like, yo, like, did I happen to give you my phone or something? And she was just (laughs) like, no. I was just like, well, then I dropped mine somewhere where we were standing. And... So she pulls out her phone. My cousin pulled out that phone, put out the flashlights. You know, we're just looking on the floor for a just black before iPhone. Before I find my iPhone. Yeah, before I find my iPhone. Even if it, I don't even know if it would have worked with all the service to EDC. You know, oh, it's not, right. You know? Yeah, now now the the towers can handle a little, yeah, little bit better. Yeah, but, but it's like then, yesterday back in 2015, you couldn't send anything. You know, you yeah, couldn't. literally talk about that a little bit. Back in 2014, 2015, when you would go to EDC, there's so many people in that arena that, that you just can't send texts, can't, can't send call, anything. you can't do anything. Yeah. Um, but ended up finding it. Like, just, like, everyone around us just starts looking on the floor. And then I finally look down, and it's right in front of me. I'm like, oh, thank dude. God. And then everyone just starts cheering. And the people come up, they're like, what's going on? He's like, he yeah. lost his phone, but then he found it. Yeah. And it was just so funny. Festival but yeah. energy, man. And then almost lost my phone at Deso last, or 2019. Right. Um, we were at, like, just sitting somewhere, and I'd, like, put it, I thought I'd put it in my fanny pack. Was but 2019 I guess, the last one? Yep. My first DSO was the... Oh, that was my only DSO. Really? It was great. Loved it. Would definitely Base go back. Base Canyon is definitely the new Paradiso for those of you out there who are really looking for a good experience at the Gorge. It's a lot more bassy and a lot more heavy on the music, but I'll tell you what, it's the vibes out there are great, and I went to the last one, but the one thing that I noticed about Paradiso and the Gorge, like the first time I went, it, it blew my mind, because I had been to EDC before, and yeah. I was like, this is cool, this is crazy, whoa. But it's just I'm, completely different. Dude, the complete anarchy that happens yeah. at Paradiso. Like, dude, it is like, dude, people jumping on top of fucking Oh, yeah, dude, the, those, just, those like, campsites dude. are unreal lit. Like, like, there's no law and order in those campsites. No, literally. But I've also heard, because what we did is I've heard a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, um, you know, I had trouble sleeping when I wanted to go to sleep. Well, don't, don't go to general... Well, exactly. And so Ke- Kevin, had been, <laughs> Kevin had been there year before, and he was just like, yo, let's get the premiere camping. Because then it's more quiet there. And we can go, still yeah, we can still go, go party in GA, but once we get tired and we want to go to bed, we can go back and still sleep. That's Actually, about- shitty thing that happened when we went was we took my parents' truck because we you know when you had a truck I was the only one who had one. Um, in line, I didn't realize there was a there was a leak in the radiator. No. So my radiator blew while we're in line to getting to get checked in. No. And I was like, bro, what? You know, this, I mean, it was an older Are truck. Are any of your friends mechanical? Nope. Oh, if I was in the car, I would have been like, anybody got some water, dude? Yeah, no, well, I had, I had water. We just had water, so I put some in there, you know, and just, I just literally was just like, all right, this will get us to the campsite. I'll deal with it when the, when the, when yeah. it's over, you know, yeah. I'm not going to let this ruin my diesel. Um, and so we got there, you know, I called my parents, tell them, you know, hey, trucks, radiator, blue, yada, yada. On the way back, you know, I would just have to stop, bro. I would literally have to stop and just fill it with either coolant or water. Um, and it made it, dude, it was so rough. Right. But then when, like, when we got back, you know, my parents were like, you know, we'll get it, we got it fixed. And they were like, we're getting rid of this truck. Like, right, you know, right. um, figured out that the person that they had bought it from had turned out, turned back the mileage on it. Oh, what? So instead of, it, it showed 125,000 miles, which is a lot, but it's not. Like not scary bad, you know. It's not a lot. How many did they turn it back? It was it was around three thirty. Holy yeah. shit, dude! So what a and dick, my dude. yeah, dude, that doubles the price on a truck. Yeah, my parents were like, if if we would have known that car that truck had over three hundred thousand miles, we never would have let like yeah, you take we never would have sent you. With it. Yeah, 
And I was just like, bro, that was one of the most stressful drives back. Cause I just had to kept, keep stopping and it's super hot, you know, in the, coming from the gorge in June yeah, and not sure. running, not running the AC cause the AC is going to make the, the like water and coolant leak more. Um, and so it was just, bro, I was dying. As soon as I got back, I had to work the next day too. Cause I was thinking, you know, if we leave at noon, I'll get back to Boise at six. Right. I'll relax, go to bed at eight, wake up for work and I'll be fine. Right. When in reality, we didn't get home till like 11, bro. Now you probably always take the next yeah. two days off at yeah. the festival. <laughs> but dude, my parents are such homies though. They ended up meeting us in, oh, what's that city in Oregon with the casino? Uh, I forget. Jack- but- no, no, that's, no, that's in Nevada. Nevada. It's like three hours from Boise, yeah, but, but essentially my parents met and they knew how how bad like that road, that trip was. So they just came and they ended up giving me and my friends the, the Beamer um, and they drove the truck back, you know, right, right. made it started 10 minutes later. I had to pull over because I was like, I'm exhausted. Like, I don't have to worry about that. Now. I'm going to pass out. Yeah. So my mom ended up driving the Beamer. I was in the truck with my dad and I just knocked the whole <laughs> ride home, bro. Dude, your parents are dope. That's awesome. Yeah, dude, it was quite Ripped the adventure. All right. All right, we're back. We are back. Sorry about that, Mikey. Quick little commercial break for a pee. Hey, you good, bro? <laughs> what do you think, man? We, what was your What was your absolute first impression coming in today? Because I know you've been on the show over the phone. Over the phone. Over yeah. the phone. Um, and like you said, you're like, damn, I can't remember. The setup, shit. Well, yeah, because I, yeah, I never yeah. saw the setup, and I had to think about it. But no, this is definitely a dope setup. You definitely got a setup real well. Definitely like the uh, young blood pad too. Yeah. First time, I think. Nice and zen. You've been here before, haven't you? I don't think so. I think the last time, didn't you live in an apartment right next to Capitol, like right out of house, so high school? This is actually laid out exactly like that apartment. Yeah, I was gonna say it kind of looked a little Weird, bit similar, right? but like yeah. Weird, right? So like to the T though, to the T. So it's the same company and the same builder. Oh, interesting. So, and it's the same layout of apartment. So but it's my, just so far. You know, it's weird. So I don't know if you were ever in my bedroom growing up at that apartment as a, uh, in high school, but my master bedroom is the same bedroom that was my bedroom. You're, like back of the other one? Weird, right? Because Very that was a three-bedroom and this is a one-bedroom, but in this design, I guess yeah. the one-bedroom is utilized as the master. So my bedroom door, my bathroom door, my shelving, and my closet are in the exact same locations as my That's fucking apartment growing up as a kid. That's trippy. I know. It's that's why I love this apartment though. It's so homey. I'm yeah, very comfortable like, here. Like I just like it's like I feel a very sense of home. home. Yeah, yeah. I have a very sense of home here, you know. Um and so talk talk to me a little bit, dude. You're not you're not drinking anymore. You're on keto. Uh, let's yeah. talk about why. What like what happened? What's yeah, bro, on? I just have there's like I just went and got my annual blood work done and um there was just an issue with my liver, like and one of the enzymes was just way too high. And so, you know, I had to go get an ultrasound done. I had to, ultrasound. yeah, just got to get some more blood work, more tests done. And my doctor essentially was just like, yeah, your liver's just having a problem. We're at that age now, man. We're at that age where shit's yeah. going to start going wrong. But she said it wasn't, it wasn't just like, she said what's happening to me isn't typical for a 25-year-old, you know. Right. She just said she thinks it's genetic or there's been something wrong with it. Right. And just, um, you know, kind of finally just added up to the point where it's just like not doing what it's supposed to right. do. And so essentially, you know, with your liver, obviously you can't drink. Um, and then keto. So basically my liver is fatty because it's not processing things the right way. Right. Um, and so my doctor was just or like, hey, yeah. mid kip actually. He had the same thing happen to him. Did he? Mm-hmm. He had to quit drinking. Because, yeah. But, well, he didn't have to quit. He had to dial down heavily because he yeah. was drinking heavy. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, my doctor asked me how much I drink. And I was just like, well, I only drink on the weekends. She's like, well, how much do you drink? I was like, if I'm drinking on the weekends, you know, I'm taking like a lot. Eight, eight to ten shots, you know. Like, and that's on the light side, you know, but I don't you, lie to my doctor whatsoever. I tell them everything. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. But I mean, like, cause I don't drink every single day. I mean, like on the weekends, I don't drink. Sometimes I only drink Friday. Sometimes I only drink Saturday. So in my mind, you know, averaged out, it's probably around that every weekend, you know, right. definitely not taking more than 11, 12 shots in a night. That's, right. I mean, probably could. I probably have done that before, right. but not recently. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so, yeah, the carbs um, definitely just help the fattiness. So it's not processing carbs the right way as well. So keto basically cuts out the fattiness of your liver. Right. But not necessarily doing keto because keto is also not super healthy for yourself long term. Right. Um, so I'm just doing a low-carb diet. So okay. right now I'm it's like 15 to 20% of my 
daily macros. Right. Dude, and drinking's big in your culture, too. Yeah. Isn't I mean, it? Eastern... Romanian? Yeah, Romanian. I mean, all of Eastern Europe drinks, so... <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say... I mean, I definitely think that's the reason why I have a higher tolerance than most people. Um, but it's not... I mean, it's not hard for me to not drink, you know? I feel like Basque people. is what, like Not like... So I actually looked it up because um, I was just wondering, because my doctor was just like, oh, I don't know if, like... Romanians have a higher just normal tolerance to it, you know? Right. And so I looked it up and it's basically every single country in like Eastern Europe are like are like in the top five. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to th- I can't remember. Belarus, I think, was like the most the tolerant country that to drink. alcohol. <laughs> yeah, and they yeah, and they just drink the most too, obviously, because they're higher right, tolerance. Right. But that's just that was crazy to me. I mean a lot of drinking is in culture though. Like look at Italians and red wine. Oh yeah. You know, it's fucking if you don't have a glass of red wine with your positive, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You're not telling me you don't have it, yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, but it's just, yeah. I mean, I mean, my, my parents don't really drink that much. I'm, like, the only drinker really in the family. But, like I said, bro, it's not it's not that hard to, to not drink. Like, I, I felt weird because my doctor was like, if you absolutely have to have a drink, then have a glass of red wine. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what do you mean I absolutely have to have one? Like, if it's going to fuck up my liver even more, like, I'm obviously not going <laughs> to do it. But it's just crazy to me that there are people out there that have to have. <clears throat> I probably would be the people like, all right, well, I can have a glass of red wine here and there. Like, yeah, I mean, here and there, but yeah. Dude, but you got to like, understand, like, I don't take painkillers or anything. Well, yeah, and you also do like, manual labor, but it's like, I wouldn't necessarily say that you you have to have it. You know, right. you're just treating yourself. And there's nothing wrong with I that. I could use you know? a fucking drink after eight hours of setting time. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like when I, I'm interpreting it the way of, like, you know, you're like, didn't haven't had alcohol in a week. You're like, oh, my God, I think need to have it. I need right. alcohol. You Alcoholism. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like as much drinking as I've done and you know me throughout college, I drink a lot. I mean, after I graduated, before I started my job, I was going out Monday through Saturday. You know, you had different nights everywhere. So we go different places on those nights. But I was drinking five to six days a week, you know, then definitely cut back once I got my, you know, eight to five job. Um, But on the weekends, still drinking. But, you know, quick cold turkey. Haven't had a drink in like close to a month now. How do you feel? I feel all right. Feel good. I feel, mean, you don't feel great. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, like that's I said, that's a lame answer for how much work you put into that. You should. You should say, I feel fucking great. I mean, it's just like I feel like <laughs> I haven't had to put that much work into this lifestyle change. You know what I mean? The hardest part that's is good. just, and that's really good though, because it's like it is. It is a commitment. And that should like, be acknowledged. That's really, yeah. really good. Some people would be like, "Damn, dude, fuck." Like I mean, yeah. Some days I like I get done with working. I'm like, "Fuck." They I don't need want a it. fucking nine page letter from each of their friends about how proud they are for not drinking for a month. How some people yeah. would be. Yeah. And I'm yeah, I'm definitely not like that. I mean. <laughs> For me, it's like text okay. every friend, dude. I haven't had a drink in a week, bro. Ah. Yeah, dude. It's it's. Just, I'm, I'm just glad I'm not that dude. I could have been that dude, you know. But not not dogging people who have that issue. I mean, like, when I mean, it's an issue. It's a problem. It's alcoholism. But right. Just make sure you're good. Like, I mean, dude. There's also some people, man. Like, it's you can have a minor level of it and have a couple drinks here and there a night but it's when you're drinking like a six pack a night getting fucking drunk drinking a fifth almost there, every there's single drinking night, things like that there's drinking to get drunk and there's drinking to have a drink yeah you know what i mean like you get off work you have a beer Yeah, no definitely cool you have two beers cool you have three four five beers every fucking night you just gotta you probably need to chill yeah <laughs> you need to evaluate dude <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, like, it is, I mean, some people do that, some people don't. I've never been like that. You know, I always try to get right. myself, unless I'm, like, you know, spring break or on vacation or something like that, I, try, I tell myself I'm, no drinks on the weekdays, you know. Right. Um, but, I mean, I feel like at this point, a lot of people would probably be able to do the way I do it the way I do because it's like, you know, it's like you're young, your liver's fucked up. Like, drinking's obviously only going to fuck up your liver. Like, right. I'm doing this as, like, a break, you know. I'm trying to get my liver back to normal, and then I'm sure I could go back to drinking, Right. you know. And so for me, it's just like, exactly. So it's like, yeah. for me, it's just like, I need to do what I need to do now so that I can enjoy my tequila later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's I can't, bro. I yeah. can't wait until I can have another shot of tequila. I'm sure, bro. If I just went like, like this weekend, if I was to have a couple drinks, you know, I'm actually going to McCall with the buddies. Um, but I'm not going to right. just cause it's like, why, why not? You know, yeah. like why, why a drink when you've done so good? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just like the less I do it now the better, the quicker I'll be able to get to it. And also, when once you get past that first, like, week or two, it's really just, like, yeah. whatever. It's 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 become a, a habit to you to not drink at that point. And the human body is crazy, man. You put, you put any habit into that thing, and yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to grab that shit. It's going to take it. 
Yeah. And it's just interesting. I mean, like a lot Everybody's of Everybody's got a little bit of an addictive personality. Oh, 100 percent dude. Mm-hmm. Like I think giving up eating as much carbs is a lot harder than giving up drinking. I mean carbs I are in everything, you. bro. I love French I fries. Like you Bro, that. that's tough. And you don't realize how much carbs are in everything. Right. Like cooking my own meals, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner aren't that hard mm-hmm. to not have as many carbs in. But like when you think about it, if you're like, fuck, I want a snack. Everything has carbs in it. Right, right. So you have to go with something healthy. Shit, I just offered you a granola bar. Yeah. <laughs> Can't have that. So. Exactly. That's what's but, crazy. But yeah, dude. Another crazy thing is just like, you know, with like for me, like I can still have fun not drinking. Yeah. You know, I still hang out with my buddies You're who You're a drink. generally fun fucking person. Yeah. You've try never to be, been, bro. You've never been boring to be around. If I'm, if I'm going to go do something and hang out with people, I'm going to try to make it fun. I'm going to try to be, be fun. Otherwise, what's the point of me going out there? I could just stay in my room and do nothing. Right. Know? FOMO. But That's yeah, it. exactly. I did, I, I, don't, I don't even have to be there to be drinking. I just hate the fact that I'm not a, a part of everything. But yeah, dude, yeah. fuck. I don't have to be drunk, but I just like, shit, dude, it's nice to be here. It's nice to see yeah. you guys. It's nice to be around it. And I, I don't know if I would really necessarily call that FOMO because it's like, if I wasn't doing that, I'd be sitting in my room just playing Xbox. Right. And I don't know. I value time with people, with humans, like, connecting with people on a deeper level not even right. on deeper level, just shooting the shit whatever it is like why doing this. this yeah um and so for me that's more entertain not entertaining but like i look to that more i'd have more fun doing that than just being in my house doing nothing or right. doing whatever you know what i mean yeah crazy thing is bro I, I went to the gym on friday night bro never would have thought myself to go to a gym on a friday night rather than going out drinking but right. here we are friday nights are the good nights man Friday yeah. nights are the good nights. I'm, I'm. It's crazy. I, I, I've kind of been in the realm of everything. Like from when you, when you knew me back in high school, I was what, like two hundred fucking ten pounds. Fucking, I was huge. I was a big fucker for. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily say you were huge for compared now. I'm. Thick. Oh, you, you've definitely slimmed I'm down, thick but now, but I don't think I ever really school, saw you with your shirt off back in high school. So I thought you were just. I was like a big buff. dude. I had like 16, 17 inch biceps at fucking. Like yeah, 17. you mean you mean big as in like ripped though, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, yeah. Like, I thought you meant big as in fat. I was like, I no, never no, thought no. you I were. I was just like, a, yeah. I was more of a body, but like I took bodybuilding very seriously in high school with Indy. Yeah, me and him went. We did two that a days, dude. dude. Insanely strong, dude. And I kept up with him every day. That was yeah. my goal, dude. It's because he was the strongest dude I knew. So I was like, fuck it, dude. Let's like let's go, bro. So we would go every day before school and after school. We would go to the gym. Me and Indy. What's crazy about Indy? Love the dude. I haven't seen him forever. If you're listening to this, hope you're doing well, Indy. Motherfucker's a psychopath in the best of ways, dude. <laughs> but, Working bro. on top of towers, bro. Bro, he never, he just didn't ever look like he was the strongest, most ripped, like whatever. But he was the most gorilla he, brute strong exactly. in high school. He was like 180 pounds, but he could out exactly, fucking strength bro. anyone, bro. Like, anybody said, oh, they're going to fight Indy. Every single person in the school would be like, why? Yeah, no, don't, don't do that. Like, <laughs> like, and because he was a, he was nice. Yeah, dude, he was like, like the that's nice, the thing. He was the nicest fucking dude in but, the world. But you fucked with him or his brother. Yeah, he fuck you up. Both of them, bro. It's just something in those genes, bro. <laughs> and then John had the poor fucking fact that Indy was his older brother. Yeah, so I that's mean, the shadow he had to live with all fucking day. But still, that dude was strong as fuck too. Eh, never as strong as Indy though. That's the. Well, Imagine I mean, being that guy, though. Yeah. He's never as strong as your older brother. One year younger, but could never be him. Like, dude, that's that's fucked up on the fucking mentality, dude. I don't, I don't have any brothers, so I know how to deal with that, but... I mean, when you're a brother with somebody, and, like, to them, they're literally, like, one, two years apart, so I can see yeah. John being the little brother, like... And especially because they used to uh, professionally race BMX as kids, and they did it up until, like, fucking they were 17. Yeah. And, like, Indy, honest to God, I used to go to his races in high school. That kid could have gone to the Olympics. He was fucking so good, dude. Like, so did he, did fucking good. Did he have BMX in the Olympics? Yeah. He oh, could no. have gone to the Olympics. Dude, he was so fucking insanely good at that shit. Like, he was doing it since the day he could fucking yeah. walk. You know? And him and his brother, and, and John, it was crazy. The two Massey brothers, every single race they would go to with every, like, they would go to state to fucking, and then from state they would go from there, like, to almost the Olympic level. John would always be right behind Indy. Every single time they raced bro like dude just fucking inches imagine that though as the little brother yeah i mean that yeah dude just oh god fucking damn it <laughs> like every fucking i mean dude everything that indy fucking did was just that much better than his little brother it was impressive like, dude, they were my best two friends yeah, no, yeah you know so i saw this shit fucking like firsthand and it was nothing ever funnier than when indy would put his brother in a spot 
Because his brother would always be fucking, he'd be peacocking all the fucking time. Like, we'd always have people over at their house because his mom was never around. So we would constantly have parties at his house in high school and shit. And fucking, I remember one time, dude, fucking Indy was just tired of John's shit. There was a bunch of girls at the house, but John was acting out in fool and just pissing everybody off and finally pissed and said the wrong fucking thing to Indy. And Indy grabbed John by the head and slammed him into the wall and held, held his fucking head into the wall and said, you shut the fuck up right now, John. And I was just like, God, oh, God damn it, Indy. <laughs> yeah, that's just so crazy because like, uh, both of those guys are guys I would never want to fuck with. Oh. Like, I don't want to... You, you piss them off, like, it's game over. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. But Same with O'Shea. Dude, yeah, but O'Shea... I, the three of them were just... Dude, they would always fight each other. And I was like, dude, you guys are crazy. <laughs> dude, I came from L.A., too. So I was like, dude, y'all... y'all, Even my L.A. friends would have fucked yeah. with you guys, dude. But, like, dude, I don't know. The thing about O'Shea is just, like... I, don't, I honestly don't generally think I've ever seen him pissed off. Oh, I've seen him fuck people up. Oh, I'm sure. I've seen him put people in the fucking ground, dude. That's why I'm glad I'm on good terms with all like, those guys. Like he's put he's put me in my place before too, where he just tells me to fuck off or shut the fuck up. You're out of line, Casey, and I'm just like, all right. You noted, bet. noted, <laughs> heard, <laughs> heard, brother. You're fucking heard, <laughs> bro. Also, out of shape, he, bro. he came on the podcast. Did he? Yeah, he I'll have to listen on. to it. Uh, he talked about him uh, skydiving. Actually. I was actually going to mention the skydiving. And yeah, dude, I, I have a lot of people who like do skydive, like are saying like, oh, I want to skydive. I want to do the stuff. And I'll be like, I always show him the video of that's him on his every, br- with the chicken, he, with the chicken and the beer, bro. Yeah. I was just like, bro, like, and, and that's just something like the chicken. He's literally just falling in the sky. eating yeah. fucking chicken. Like wings. it's I'm nothing. Like, and most people <laughs> would just be like, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And he's oh. just sitting there casually sipping a beer and eating a, eating a, I was snowboarding drumstick. with him. Like, I think like two months ago. And uh, he busted, like, a couple back... Like, his first back... I went with him when he busted his first backflip, too. And, like, there was another fool that we were with who just straight busted a gnarly-ass backflip and shit, you know. And I'm a pretty decent snowboarder, dude. I shred, you know, but I don't do backflips. Yeah. Yet, yeah you know, I, 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 I keep it... Now that, like, after breaking my back and stuff like that, like, this is the first year that I put a uh, board on after breaking my back. And, like, it was a huge, just, like... Wake like a up. win you're just like I, dude, in, in my fucking like my fucking mentality i was like oh my god dude this board under my feet right now I, like the fact that this could have never happened yeah, again to never me, happened oh again. it's so dude it's just a deep appreciation for the snow dude like you you have no idea dude i'm so ass at snowboarding <laughs> all my buddies go and they're like dude come up and i've been snowboarding like, my like literally uh i started skiing when i was like six years old dude and i i love it i just love it I mean, it seems dope. You don't even I just have like to be good. It's just the mat, dude. Like when you get up on that fucking lift, I don't bring my phone. I don't bring the the, the world behind me. When you're up yeah. on that mountain, dude, it's all down here. It's all down here, and that's what, dude. I blew out my fucking shoulder like two weeks ago on bogus because I was just fucking hauling ass down a fucking diamond, having a ball, fucking drunk as shit on tequila, and I caught it in because I was. <laughs> I was riding on a newer board that I switched my board, like, uh, the, the fucking trip right before that. So, this is probably, like, my eighth or ninth run with this newer board. And it, it was probably, like, four sizes smaller than the board I normally ride on. And so, I was all over the place, dude. I was drunk, new board, having fun, you know, fucking kept falling and shit. And, like, I was hauling ass my last my last run on the backside, dude. I caught my edge, just fucking flipped right on the patch of ice and just fucking... Linebackered this fucking patch of ice, dude. Full shouldered into it, dude. And I ended up fracturing like the whole corner of my shoulder and tearing some ligaments in it and shit. And still snowboarded it out. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, dude. I, I don't know. I guess I just actually need to take the time to learn. Like, I've had a few people, buddies, you know, who are like, oh yeah, dude, I can teach you, but they're like decent, but not good enough to actually right. teach somebody, you know. And so I'm just like the whole time I'm spent on my ass, like falling down, like not right, even going right. and. I remember one time I was actually getting the hang of it for a little bit, and they forgot. They took me on the backside of I don't remember which one. This was like back in high school, dude. And there were some moguls. Bogus max backside is yeah, dude. some gnarly snow, dude. There, you, there was well, there were some moguls there, and they I had no idea what to do. <laughs> and I look, bro, I look back at them, and they just go. So I'm just like, well, I'm in it for the long haul. Let's see what fucking happens, dude. I know how to snowboard moguls. If I am out of shape and I go down a mogul run. I have to stop halfway through and take breaths. Like, I'm so excited. Because, dude, you're just... <laughs> like, you're literally fucking pumping yeah. on every single fucking one. It's so but here's hard the thing, bro. your legs, I didn't dude. know that you had to pump. I didn't know, I didn't know what to do, bro. <laughs> this is literally the longest I've it's been standing fun, on a board. Dude, riding down moguls on a snowboard is the... Yeah. It is, 
it is not fun. It's fucking shitty, dude. And bro, I it's a ate, ski run. It's a ski run. Yeah, I ate so much shit, bro, that I literally took the board off, walked the hip, walked down. I, I was, was like, with uh, this. Chris Holler and Avery Brennan in high school, and they did the same thing to me. They took me down that same mogul run. Yeah, fucking dude, they were just like, well. I was like, dude, what the fuck, dude? I told you guys I wasn't fucking good. Yeah. I dead ass said, this is in high school. I was like, dude, I, just, dude, I fucking yeah. just switched from skis, bro. Like, I'm trying to figure this out still. I'm like, what the fuck? Terrible. Yeah, no, dude, it was the same. And, and they were like, yeah, I told them, I was like, yo, I'm not, I don't want to go on any of the like, big runs. You know, I can hardly get down the fucking bunny hill. And then they're like, oh, no, you're doing, you're doing good, bro. You got this. Like, And at this point, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that like like that adrenaline rush I'm like oh dude I'm actually doing this you know I'm up for like longer than 20 seconds you know <laughs> turn the corner and then all of a sudden I just see those moguls and I'm just like oh well here we go <laughs> didn't moguls one me zero bro. dude how I taught myself how to snowboard was like I got a season pass in high school I went up every single day in my little Saturn after school I went every fucking day I, dude my first year with a season pass i probably went snowboarding like 45 times like insane amount like every single fucking day that i could go i went and I, what i would do is i would wear my football pads under my pants the ones that protect your okay, yeah, tailbone yeah. i wear my dead ass tailbone pad when i go snowboarding and i would just send it down the mountain dude be like, fuck it i'm gonna learn i'm gonna figure this out and i would yeah. go by myself and just hit as many runs as i could until i got it and uh i mean it's it's not hard, dude. It's not difficult. It just takes time. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I've just, just realized, like, for me, I don't think any sport that doesn't have my feet on the ground is for me. <laughs> I've tried, like, wake surfing, wakeboarding, um, snowboarding hasn't worked out, can't skateboard for anything. I mean, like, I can't skateboard for shit, but that's also because I won't. I refuse because I got, I got bad knees and legs yeah. from doing tile you know, so the thing with snowboarding, the reason I switched from skis to snowboarding is because both of your legs are on the same board, you know, and it kind of, st- like, it's a little it's more, more stable. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it's more more stable, less chance of you tearing an ACL if you fall. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's the same thing with me. It's, I told you how, like, my femurs, like, rotated 30 degrees out. My friend was like, he skis, and he's like, dude, you should try skiing. And I was like, dude, I'd love to, but that'd be a little difficult with the way my legs are situated. Right, so, right. Um, and snowboarding would, I mean, I'm not saying I'd never go snowboarding again. But it's kind of like, you know, when the homies go up to snow, uh, to go up to Bogus or wherever we're going, right. they're going, you know, um, who wants to waste a full day teaching somebody when they could just be out there themselves? You know what I mean? Right. So, exactly. I mean, that's my thing, though. It's not even about the when I go with people who are like new and shit, I, I enjoy just, just teaching people. Oh, yeah. I'm I sure my fun. homies would be down with it. But on my end, I'd be like, damn, bro, I'm wasting their day. Like they could be out just having fun <laughs> on the runs. But. Oh, but they'll leave you. Oh, at 100%. They'll leave, they'll leave you. They'll, they'll, they'll leave you. They'll give you a couple of runs. They'll show you how to do it. Be like, okay, you do that four more times. We'll be back in like 30. <laughs> yeah. but I mean, that's what I do. But um, So, Mikey, I know you're hungry. Uh, I know uh, we're shooting for an hour today. We probably hit that. Is there anything you want to throw out here, throw and say before we uh, kind of come to a close? Shit, bro. I don't know. Do you want some philosophical shit? Do you just want some normal shit? No, I want some philosophical shit. All right. I'll t- let, me, let me think. One thing I will say, you know, one of my life mottos, um, mom ain't raised no bitch. All right. So take that how you want it. Um, and then the second, you don't make memories sleeping. Okay. Fuck sleep. I mean, we're old now, so we probably need more sleep. <laughs> so that's probably more relevant when you're, like, in college or, like, just straight out of high school right. or things like that, you know. But no, That's always relevant. Um, don't take no shit. And then you only have, I've already said this earlier, but you only have so much time and energy in a day. Don't let... One negative event, one negative person, no negative energy. Like, don't let them waste your time or your energy. Deal. Do you, be you, party hard, party safe. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Tenescu, the one, the only, and the fantastic. This has been episode 37 of Young Blood Podcast, guys. We've been doing this for almost a year. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for being a part of this. Follow me on Instagram, M. Dinescu. Follow me on Twitter. Mikey boy. Hoochia. And guys, if you love the podcast, do me a favor. Subscribe on Patreon. It's three bucks a month. It's like my OnlyFans, but I don't show you my titties. So help me out. Hit that subscribe button. (laughs) Come on now. Thanks, guys. Have a great night.